That man running away in the fog is an engineer at California's MetaWave. He's going to try to hide from an automated car. Will it be able to see him hundreds of meters away? Welcome back to Press Here, and the answer is yes. The self-driving car will be able to see him, not with cameras, not with LiDAR, but with an improved version of radar developed at MetaWave, a spin-out of Xerox Park. MetaWave is revolutionizing radar, which after all is a more than 80-year-old technology, making it cheaper and better and smaller. Physicist Dr. Maha Ashur is leading that effort, funded by Hyundai and Toyota, as well as traditional venture capital firms like Kozla Ventures. Thanks for being with us this morning. So cars, automated cars have cameras. They have LIDAR, which is lasers, right? Light emitting, whatever, whatever, <laughs> distance ranging, yes. Uh, and then radar. What makes radar so important? It seems like that's the most old fashioned of all the technologies. That's correct. Uh, radar is the only sensor that can reach long ranges. Why do we need to reach long ranges? Because eventually you got cars... that guy in the fog. Yeah, yeah <laughs> not the, only the fog, but cars cannot just drive at 20 miles an hour, right, Emmy? No, they cannot. So, <laughs> yeah, especially if you're driving a Tesla, you need to go 55, 65. That means time. 75, 85. Yes, yes, thank you. So even if you have a level four or eventually level five car without drivers, you just cannot drive a car full speed if you cannot see far away. When I talk about far away, you'll be able to see pedestrian like you saw uh, Edmund in the fog video at 200 plus meter. We will show that at CES this week and also be able to detect cars and truck be beyond 400 meter. You cannot do this with LiDAR. You cannot do this with camera. The radar is the only sensor. So why is it then that like Google and Waymo and all of those other um, upstarts that are doing automotive um, autonomy research, none of them are using radar? Like what makes your radar special and, and what makes it overcome the current high technology of LiDAR? Analog. People are focused on digital because that's what Moore's Law taught us in the past decades. We're bringing analog back because at these high frequencies, digital is not enough. You have to offset it with analog. And that's why MetaWave is the only company that is doing these uh, improved radar and also the 5G radio using analog beam forming. I, we've seen stories in the last um, in the last few weeks about people attacking Waymo cars. Uh, I'm very curious, as somebody who's in the industry, how do you view this? What do you think is going on? Why are people behaving this way? That's one of the challenges is to get acceptance from the general audience about autonomous vehicle. It's happening, you know. My daughter refuses to own a car. She loves Uber and Lyft um, because independence for them is to be connected continuously on their cell phone. Independence for us was to move from point A to point B. That means we have to drive. So it's going to take time. It's going to go through some learning lessons, but eventually it's going to happen. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the people, you know, you read in the old newspaper articles about the horseless carriage, you know. <laughs> th those are Satan's, you know. People got very angry at cars themselves. Yeah. Now, if, if cars have radar, and someday uh, every car has your radar on it, aren't when, car, you know, I might pass a thousand cars on my way to work coming the other direction. If all of them are beaming radar at me, is that something I need to worry about? Yes, so interference is yes, always is. a problem. No, 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 my body. Yeah. I mean, you know. Oh, the, your okay. body. Yeah. Like, yes. Oh, yeah, no, oh, it's yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So what part of our radar, we also do artificial intelligence, so we classify objects. So we will know that you have cars coming at a closer distance or you have pedestrians right. closer to you. What I mean is radar beams. I'm constantly exposed to radar Going beams. Into Going your into your body. body. Is that something that's, that's a problem? It's not a problem because at this millimeter wave, the signal decays very quickly. Okay. So if you are a few meters away from the radar, you're safe. If you are behind your windshield in the car, you're fine. Now let's go back to, I think, the question you were going to, you expected I was asking, and that is, if every car has a radar and they work at certain radio frequencies, how is it that they're not all interfering with each other? They will. The answer is they will. Today is not a problem because not all cars have these long range powerful radar. And that's why being able to focus the beam in a very narrow cone, you're eliminating interference. And I believe down the road, government would impose such a performance to make sure they don't cause interference, especially in high you know, intersec intersections uh, you know, places. So, and also being able to steer the beam. So if I'm blinded by some interference, I'm moving the signal uh, to the right, to the left, to the top, to the bottom, or also changing the frequency. So there are ways you can uh, you know, overcome the interference will, issues. Will it put the radar detection uh, device, oh, <laughs> device yes. out of business? 
Oh, you're talking about uh, yeah. Yeah, my radar yes. detector, which oh, go bing, oh. bing, 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 yeah. bing. <laughs> you know, level four and level five, they will be compliant. I drive a Tesla, and the Tesla complies with whatever speed limit is on the road. So it keeps <laughs> me on Tesla track. Tesla does, yeah. but, but, but I know. But drives really fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. But I mean, level four and level five, they will be compliant. So right. it will be already yes. programmed, and it will be safer than a human driver. Is the exciting technology, I mean, we talk about uh, automated cars and self-driving cars. My car, which I'm driving myself, still does amazing things. I mean, it can back itself into a, a parking spot. It warns me if I'm going to hit something, and if I don't pay attention, we'll stop anyway. I, I think that's where we're really going to get the exciting things. Or is it the automated cars? Is it, is it the, the assist or the automation? The assist is helping because... It basically helps the driver, especially new drivers. Old drivers like us, we already have the sensor. We know how yeah. to overcome some situation. But new drivers, you know, trying to get into that space, it helps them in terms of the parking or lane assist or changing lanes. But the most excitement is going to happen is when you have a full level five car, which is going to take decades to come into place, where you don't even have a driver behind the steering wheel. And the riders, as well as people, you know, on the street, they trust this Let car. me quickly yeah. follow yeah. up with that, because I just have a couple seconds left. And that is, you're saying, when I walk out and I routinely see cars driving down my street that have nobody behind the wheel, 10 years? Yes. All right. I would say around 10 And you're years. an MIT physicist, so I'm going to take your word for it. <laughs> yeah. Doctor, thank you for being here. Thank you very support. much. Well, big banks got into real trouble 10 years ago in the last recession. What can new fintech startups learn from that? When Press Here continues.